Hey guys, um, in this video we're going to talk about uh, grooming and adding the baby hairs. Uh, so let's paint this mask first, this density mask, since it's one of the ones we didn't do yet. So I'm just adding a merge uh, before our original mask layer. And I'm going to merge uh, the original hair density mask into the over just so we can see it. Um, I've got a sponge brush activated with a white color and a really light opacity. And I'm painting on the baby hair density mask layer uh, that we added previously. And I'm just like lightly brushing some um, little sponge brush things on the on the outsides. So like right along the hairline everywhere. And I'm looking at the, my reference to see where the baby hairs are growing on my uh, model. So I'm just being really delicate with it. Um, there might be a lot of back and forth at this stage in terms of like coming back to Mari and painting over some sections that you don't want baby hairs to grow, but um, this is the general idea. All right, so once that's finished, we can turn that merge off and now we can see our, our mask that we, we painted for the baby hair. Save it and we can export this and we're ready to get into Maya. So let's use the export manager and export just like we did before. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do when we're setting up our baby hairs is we're going to uh, export a preset version of the head hair. And we can just do that by going up to file and export preset. And we can save this inside the XGen folder in our project called head hair. Make sure you're exporting the head hair description. You can just click export, super simple. Um, the next step we're gonna do is make sure you're selecting the head uh, XGen uh, Geo, and you're gonna import that same preset. So we're gonna go navigate to wherever we saved that, which is in our project under the XGen folder, and then grab that preset. And we'll call it baby head, baby hairs, and then we're gonna place the guides manually and import those. All right, so now we've done that, we can start, we're gonna make sure we're inside that description. We're gonna start placing our guides like we normally would. And you'll notice that this time around, um, we're gonna basically have the exact same settings. So this saves all of our width settings, our length, um, well, sorry, not length, because of that determines by our guides, um, but it's saving all of our presets, even our modifiers. So now I'm just importing uh, the density mask we just painted, the exact same way we always do. So I'm making a, a map, and then I'm going to go find it in the hypershade, same as usual and import the file from Mari over top of this one. So it should be file seven and we can just click the folder and find the image and import it in. Using presets is really, really great if you wanna save some time um, with uh, baby hairs because then we can just have the exact same settings as the original hair, which is super awesome. Um, so I use this often when I need to mimic the same style of hair. All right, so if we just import that and save it, you'll notice that now we have hairs only growing along the hairline. All right, so the next step of baby hairs is, uh, well, let's place more guides and then we're gonna groom the guides. So we're gonna use our um, sculpting tools and the moving vertex uh, tool, and we're gonna just move our guides into the positions. Um, we can also pretty much remove all of these modifiers. Uh, some of them could be useful, like maybe the cut can stay and maybe a noise. Um, but for the most part, a lot of the clumping we won't need because baby hairs don't like, I mean, maybe you might wanna clump it to the, to the guide, depending on what kind of baby hairs you're doing. Uh, some might be clumping, but for the most part, baby hairs are kind of like stray, kind of random hairs. So it depends on kind of what look you're going for. For this guy, we're just going to do some like very stray looking ones. I left the guide clumping for now. We'll see if we like this uh, and later I might remove it if I don't like the clumping look. Obviously the clumping won't work until I update the guides. So when I set up the maps and update it based on guides, that won't work. It basically won't clump until we set that up. 
All right, so I'm just making the guides longer and seeing what this looks like. I'm adding some noise on here um, just to kind of play with some uh, frizziness of the hair. I don't want to make it look too crazy, but uh, trying to find a way to like integrate this into into the slicked backness so like it still feels like it's little baby hairs that kind of didn't make the cut into the into the brush back the comb over I guess you could call it <laughs> um but they still did try their best <laughs> so just adjusting some of these shapes here once we get it good on one side, we can always mirror it to the other. So I'm not worried um, about about the screen right just yet. Those guides can uh, can wait. Apologize for the speed of this guy, but I just wanted you to be able to see everything, um, even if it is quite quick. At least you can see how everything's being groomed around. The cut might be just a little too intense because it's cutting all of the all the little ones real short. So this is where we're going to set up the maps and maybe make sure you click guide. So now you can see how it's kind of clumping to each guide, which doesn't look horrible, but it doesn't look quite right in this situation. I feel like a time I would use clumping for like baby hairs is maybe if it's like um, females hair where you have very long uh, kind of like sideburn areas, those kind of areas might do like a little bit of a clump because you have a lot of strands that are falling down. But when they're short like this, they kind of tend to don't don't clump together as much. The longer they get, the more clumpy they are. delete these guys on that side and then we'll mirror the other ones over because I like the way that these ones look cool let's move that one stray guy he's just chilling so let's work on the back pieces now so we're going to groom these ones down towards the hair so we're trying to mimic what the baby hairs are doing in the back. Already looks a lot better. I'm looking at my reference, by the way, to, to be able to see the, the direction of the hair growth. So it does this really weird kind of comb over, which is really strange, but it, this is the way that the hairs are growing. Um, add more guides in here to get a lot more control over the sections of hair so don't worry about uh, if you feel like you're not having enough control over some of the guides you can always add more don't worry about that all right so i'm just going to turn the cut percentage down to probably like 0.4 because we're cutting a lot of hair in the back here where it gets short which for the head hair where all the hair was a lot longer it was fine, but for the shorter baby hairs, it's probably not fine to be cutting it so much. Okay, so we just mirrored that over. And then I'll just change these so they're not perfectly symmetrical. Again, I don't have reference for this side of the head, so we're just going based off of the back view.
Okay, so the last thing I want to show you uh, and mention is the uh, culling primitives option. So you can use this select primitive tool that I just clicked at the top, um, and you can select some primitives, and they'll actually highlight green. If we go down to culling and enable culling, you can actually click the button next to it, which is an empty little square. And when you select the primitives and click that button, it actually removes the primitive uh, from existence. Um, they'll still be there, they're just not going to be rendered or loaded. So those specific primitives you've selected can be removed. So this can be useful for like some really last minute cleanups that maybe painting your maps are not going to work, or maybe um, you just can't seem to remove one specific hair and you don't want to mess up everything else because you love it all, then you can just call a few primitives. I wouldn't recommend calling a lot at a time, but this is good for those like last minute cleanups. And if you want to be able to take some primitives back, like maybe you culled a section you didn't want to, you can always display the culled primitives, use the select tool, and then um, bring them back. So you can click the same cull button and it'll uncull the selected primitives. Just adding a little bit of noise back in here. And then we can delete the other noise because it's doing nothing. that one. All right, so let me show you the uh, how to view the uh, cold primitives. So if you click this display cold primitives down in the culling section, you can now see the cold primitives in red. So they'll be highlighted red. And you can actually bring them back if you wanted to by selecting them and then unculling. At the bottom, you can see the uncull button. And it'll uncull them. All right, so this is basically um, how I go about doing baby hairs for my model. This obviously needs some tweaking, but between Mari and uh, and here with some some settings, but this is uh, the base idea. We're very close to finishing. Cool. So let's uh, get jump into some look dev and final touches later.